Hello, welcome back to the woods. Now, in the last video, we looked at preparations for the season to come. We, we looked at reproofing a poncho. In this video, we're also gonna look at preparations ready for winter, but this time it's not your gear, it's you. To be more precise, it's your ability to be able to get a fire going, because that is a really important skill in the winter. Now in the summer months, we don't have to worry too much about lighting a fire. Certainly this summer, everything was tinned to dry and you didn't particularly want to light one. Also your nighttime temperatures, well, it wasn't particularly cold, so you weren't really lighting a fire for warmth. The only time you were lighting a fire was for cooking, so you could keep it quite small. In the winter, well, things are a little bit different. You're gonna need a fire not only to keep you warm, but also for cooking your food, for light, potentially drying wet clothing out. And to add into that mix, well, it's also the time of year when weather conditions mean that it's kind of against you. All your materials are probably going to be wet. And it's under those conditions that your fire lighting skills really need to be up to scratch. Now, obviously, I'm out in the woods a lot. I'm also out in the woods teaching a lot, and I'm regularly teaching people how to light fires. So I need to know what I'm talking about. I also need to make sure that my demonstration fire works every time. And that's what I'm gonna share with you. The technique that I use for getting a fire going under any conditions, first time, every time. Now, what I'm not gonna to focus too much on is the actual method of ignition, because that really doesn't matter. You could be using a ferro rod, you could be using a lighter, you could be using matches, you could be using a magnifying glass, you could be using a flint steel with a bit of charcoal. That doesn't really matter. What I found matters is your actual preparation, the method and materials that you use to prepare your fire. And that really is key, particularly under winter conditions. So as I said, a key part of getting your fire going in the winter is knowing which materials to collect. Now, obviously you guys are scattered about all over the place, so I don't know what your predominant trees are and the predominant types of wood in your area are. However, I'm kind of guessing you've probably got some of this stuff and this is birch and I tend to find, certainly in my experience, pretty much everywhere I've been, unless it's down towards the Mediterranean, I can still find birch and it is a key key ingredient and for several reasons because we are going to get several of the items we need from this the humble birch so apart from growing in lots and lots of different environments the birch tree also gives us several other things that we need the first one is this stuff the birch bark. Now, I'm sure you are no stranger to this stuff. We know the qualities it has. You can use it for making things because it's strong, it's durable, it's waterproof. Indeed, my, my glasses case, my several of my knife sheaths are all made from birch bark. It's also waterproof, so you can make containers which will hold water. And the reason it's waterproof is because it contains that all important tar, that oil that naturally occurs between the layers of the bark. Now that is useful to us because it's very very flammable. And as you can see very quickly you've got a very very good fire starter and it is our number one most useful fire starter ooh, in this environment. Now something else you will find in birch woods is trees like these and this one is dead. It's been crowded out by the others and it's dead standing wood ideal for what we want for getting a fire going. Just like that. Now that will give me, as well as good firewood, it also gives me a ready supply of bark. And I can just slice it down, like so. And this stuff will peel readily off like so now 
Now in fairly dense woodland, birches want the light so they tend to grow up quite tall and when they're tall they're also quite flexible and so they blow about in the wind and those bits drop down and they hitch in the branches either of the tree itself or of other stuff and if you look carefully what you can find are lots and lots of these and these are bone dry they're covered in that lovely flammable birch bark now that lovely flammable birch bark also as we know is waterproof so in theory anything that is laying on the ground normally we say shouldn't really be used because it's, it's not ideal particularly in the winter because it's going to be wet birch twigs are a little bit different and lying around the trees out here where you've got good clumps of birch you'll find lots and lots of these twigs now ideally what you want are ones that are thin like this but also ones that are long from your armpit to your fingertip in length in fact so a good length but what you'll find is an absolute abundance of them lying on the floor around these birch trees There you go, that is my twig bundle. Now, what I tend to do, and it's not what a lot of people who demonstrate fires do, which is they gather their stuff well in advance, it's usually several days in advance, it's stored away somewhere dry so that it dries out. What I do is I tend to collect it either just before my students arrive or actually go out and collect it with my students so that whatever they are using, I'm using too. Also, with this method, using these materials, it doesn't matter if it's pouring with rain. This stuff will still work the same. Now, you need a good quantity. As I said, it needs to be at least armpit to fingertip in length, which these are. And what you also want is a good enough quantity. And what I tend to say is, if you can get your bundle just about under your arm and just touch your hip, that should be enough just about to get your fire going. Right, let's crack on. So everything is together that I need. I've got my twig bundle, I've got my birch bark, I've got some twigs for my fire platform, and I've also got these, and these are withies. And these I'm going to need for preparing my twig bundles. So that's everything. What I'm now going to show you is how to put it all together. So the first of those jobs is to prepare these, my little withies. All I'm going to do, and this is, all this is is a little bit of dogwood, strip the leaves off. And then I want these to bend so that I can tie them. So I need to train the fibres in the dogwood to bend where I want them to too. To do that, all I'm going to do is just bend it around my knee a few times. And I'm going to want one of these for each bundle. And they should be flexible enough that you can tie with them. So next, I'm going to take my twig bundle and I'm going to divide it in two. Like so. And then, I'm going to take this and I'm going to compress it. And then once it's compressed, I'm going to bend it in two. Like so. And then using my withy, I'm going to tie that in place.
like so. So I've now got my twig bundle, <coughs> lots of fine sticks, all bound together. There's a really good reason for that, is when we add twigs to a fire, we want them to stay together. That way you get the fuel and the oxygen part of your fire triangle just right. If you just throw them on loosely, then the action of the heat allows it to fall apart and that mix is not there. Or at least it is, but not in the right quantities. What we want is perfect quantities to get perfect combustion. Once I've done that with one, I'll get the other one done. And that gives me two good sized twig bundles. And that's just what I need to get this fire started. So my next job, simply clear the ground. And with that done, I'm gonna make a little platform of sticks ready to light my fire on. So there we go, I'm all set and ready. I've got my twig bundle, I've also got my little raft of sticks, I've got my birch bark. Now to light my fire today, I'm gonna to be using my knife and ferrocium rod, and all I'm gonna do is take a piece of the birch bark, and I'm just gonna scuff it up using the belly of my knife blade, and then drop a spark on it. With that done, I'll add the strips, the remaining strips of birch bark across the top. Once they catch, I can then add these. So at this point, I'm just holding the twig bundle over the top, not resting it down. And then once that one has got flame coming up through it and the twigs are starting to catch, I gently rest it down. With that done, I'll place this one over the top at right angles to the first one. And straight away, what you'll see is you get a lot of flame, a lot of heat coming up through. The first twig bundle catches very quickly. The second one takes that heat and that will help that one ignite. And in a few seconds, you've suddenly got the start of a very, very good, very, very hot fire. So with that going, what I need to do now is add some more sticks and I can get a kettle on.
So there you go, a relatively simple, quick way of getting your fire going and it works pretty much under all conditions. As I said, it doesn't matter if the birch twigs are wet, if you pick them up off the floor, they still work. We've had quite a bit of rain in the last few days and you can see they went up very quickly. That big amount of heat you get at first is ideal for when you add another layer of sticks over the top because in the winter they're going to be wet and damp and all of that heat will help to dry them out as they go on. So it's a very good winter fire method and it works under all conditions. Whether you want it as a, a warming fire or whether you want it as a fire to that's going to last and sustain and go on to create a much bigger fire. This method works very very well indeed and I've used it for many many years and I've taught it to an awful lot of people and now I've passed that on to you. So there you go, that is my method for getting fires going. I don't know whether it's the right or the wrong way, it's worked for me for a lot of years and it's worked for an awful lot of people that I've taught to light fires over the years. So get out in the woods and give it a go. Getting ready for the winter isn't just about the gear, it's also about the skills and making sure that your skills are up to scratch before you head out. So this one is a good one to practice. As I said, it even works in the rain. If you go back into my videos, there's a video called If It's Not Raining. And that was a little challenge. I had 30 minutes before it got dark. It was pouring with rain and it had been all day, but I still managed to get a fire going using that exact method. It does work, give it a try. So if you enjoyed this video, then remember, hit that thumbs up button. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the channel. Keep your eye on the channel because there are gonna be some announcements coming up to do with the uh, Moores Kahansky Memorial Weekend, which will be coming up in December. There's also gonna be some uh, updates on stuff that's happening over on the Etsy shop. <sighs> Down below, you will find links to my uh, social media, so Instagram, Facebook, etc. There is also a link to the Etsy shop and my Patreon page. Why not get involved with the channel and become a patron? I think that's everything. I've been Neil, and until next time, stay safe in the woods. <laughs>